That didn't feel right. Oh, for five cents. Now what? Good thing the power was off. I thought I felt around the edge of that two by four and I didn't feel a wire there. Oh boy. Now what do I do? When working on a renovation, you thought you took all the necessary precautions, but you made a mistake and you cut a wire. <laughs> Thankfully, nobody got hurt, but now what? How do you fix this without a time wasting and costly repair? Well, stay with me till the end where I'll tell you about a great new invention that makes this a little bit less of a disaster than you first might have thought. So as you can see, I didn't actually do this. I set it up here on my demonstration board to show you what can happen when you cut a wire and how you might be able to fix it. And now I, I use this example because it's something that I actually did myself in real life. In the real world, we were building our new shop attached to an old building and they were gonna be joined and I had to cut off the, the porch area for the old building to make room for the new one. Thought I'd check for everything. Same scenario here, I was using a sawzall and I actually cut through a live 14-2 wire. Now, interesting about this is that it was an old Federal Pioneer 15 amp breaker and that breaker didn't trip through that whole episode of sawing through that wire. It actually made enough arcing and sparking to take a whole bite out of my sawzall blade. I didn't even realize I'd cut through a wire until I looked on the other side and of course looked at my sawzall blade and that breaker didn't trip. So don't always trust your breakers. They can be faulty and not trip under a short circuit situation. So anyway, to talk about what you do now in a case like this, most cases you're gonna have to, if you can't get enough slack to make a proper splice in a junction box with the cover on it and everything, chances are you're not going to be able to because this might be a run in the attic or in the inside a wall and you're gonna have to open up some drywall and if you can't get enough slack, which isn't likely as I mentioned, then you're gonna to have to pull a new cable, put in a junction box and put in as much slack as you can get into properly into the junction box from one end. And then you're either gonna to have to replace where that was going to all the way to the device. And if that's not possible, then you're gonna to have to have a piece of wire between them. So you'll have to go back to the cable where it's good, uh, cut it, put it into a junction box and add another piece of cable, another junction box where you can get to the good wire and go from there. But you can't do a free air junction, uh, free air splice inside a wall or in an attic or anywhere for that matter. They got to be inside a junction box. That's called a free air or a flying splice and it's just not allowed and it, quite frankly it's dangerous. So what can you do? There is an alternative if you can get enough here by pulling enough slack from either way to splice these wires together. There's a new invention I'm going to tell you about. But first, what you can do is make this splice and if it's going to work, then we'll go on from there. So there you have it. I was able to get enough slack to make a open splice or a flying splice here in the cable. But as I mentioned, this is not legal and you can't leave it as such. If you come across one of these, you got to fix it. And in the ways I mentioned before, or the device I'm going to show you is the best way to fix this. But for now, let's just say we made this splice. We needed to get power back onto that circuit just to finish our job. We've cut that two by four we were cutting away. Now I'm going to show you a patent pending box that we can use to make this all up to code. So watch what happens next once I remove that block of wood that we were cutting out of the way anyway and we'll show you how to fix this. All right, so I've removed that piece of two by four that I was cutting away anyway, and I've installed some blocking. Check this out. This is the Racketeers Open Splice Junction Box. Repair open splice is quick and easy. Installation instructions, simply turn off the electricity, bend the doors inward, position wire splice in the box, attach the box to the structure, close lid, and tighten the screws. So there you go. We've already got the splice made. We want to pick two of the openings of the inlets for the box, wire inlets. Bend them in, cross from each other here. Then get the box positioned in behind the splice. 
like so. Now we'll just screw that box to the structure. There's multiple, multiple fastening uh, options in these boxes. Two screws ought to more than do it. Like so. Then simply close the lid of the box. Tighten in the box screws, cover screws, Phillips head. Being careful with a cordless drill or a cordless driver so you don't strip them or over tighten them. So there you have it, patent pending. That's the open splice junction box. Check it out for yourself. I'll leave a link in the description at opensplicebox.com. What a great, useful invention for a situation such as this. So there you go. What could have been a huge disaster from sawing through a cable. Shame on me for not checking all around before I cut. But as I said, just set that up for you as a demonstration. We did have enough slack to enable the use of this open splice junction box from Racketeers. OpenSpliceBox.com is where you can find yours. Thank you, Dale from BuiltRightProducts.net for sending me a few of these. Everybody should have some in their toolbox and in their supplies if you're going to be working on electrical. Hope you learned something from this video. Please leave some comments below on any situation you may have ran into and where you might find these useful. Don't forget, as usual, to like and subscribe to my channel. Again, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Terry Peterman, The Internet Electrician.